it's easy to to feel uh disappointed angry infuriated and i'm i'm not gonna bullshit you guys and try to tell you to stuff that down you know or meditate and you're gonna feel these feelings what i want to caution against is despair that's that's what i really don't want to see i don't want to see people feel hopeless about the future i'm not hopeless about the future this sucks this really sucks and let me count the ways for how much this f sucks but keep your chins up for christ's sakes don't let them see you looking at the ground don't let them don't let them see you like that okay whatever you do don't let them see you looking at the ground it's on to the next fight friends if you have a second or two click like comment down below i would really appreciate it thank you guys and i hope you enjoy the video Longtime viewers of the channel are aware that i am a huge fan of chess which brings me to the sponsor of today's video anniechess.com this is a variation of chess that is being developed alongside chess.com another organization that i've done partnerships with in the past what's unique about this kind of chess is the introduction of spells each turn you take adds one mana to your pool and you can use that mana to cast spells during the game They've recently launched the alpha version of the game that you can now get exclusive access to using code Hutch. There is a link down in the description below. If you click it, it'll take you to the site. I played it for a couple days now. It is a lot of fun. If you're a fan of chess and you want to experience a new way to play it, check it out. You know, moments like this really matters, you know, like, uh... This is what the peaceful transfer of power looks like in this country. It's important that it happens even when our worst nightmares are realized. And Good so afternoon. how graceful she Good handles afternoon. this moment will matter. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let me say... And I love you back. And I love you back. So let me say, my heart is full today. My heart is full today. Full of gratitude for the trust you have placed in me. Full of love for our country. And full of resolve. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted not what we fought for, not what we voted for, but hear me when I say, hear me when I say, the light of America's promise will always burn bright. As long as we never give up and as long as we keep fighting, To my beloved Doug and our family, I love you so very much. To President Biden and Dr. Biden, thank you for your faith and support. To Governor Walls and the Walls family, I know your service to our nation will continue. And to my extraordinary team, to the volunteers who gave so much of themselves, to the poll workers and the local election officials, I thank you, I thank you all. Look, I am so proud of the race we ran and the way we ran it, and the way we ran it. Over the 107 days of this campaign, we have been intentional about building community and building coalitions, bringing people together from every walk of life and background, united by love of country with enthusiasm and joy in our fight for America's future. And we did it with the knowledge that we all have so much more in common than what separates us. Now I know folks are feeling and experiencing a range of emotions right now. I get it. Well. <laughs> 
but we must accept the results of this election. Earlier today, I spoke with President-elect Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition and that we will engage in a peaceful transfer of power. A fundamental principle a of shade in there. democracy is that when we lose an election, we accept the results. That principle, as much as any other, distinguishes democracy from monarchy or tyranny. And anyone who seeks the public trust must honor it. At the same time, in our nation, we owe loyalty not to a president or a party, but to the Constitution of the United States. I kind of expected her to go this route. And loyalty to our conscience and to our God. My allegiance to all three is why I am here to say, while I concede this election, I do not concede the fight that fueled this campaign. The fight, the fight for freedom, for opportunity, for fairness, and the dignity of all people. A fight for the ideals at the heart of our nation, the ideals that reflect America at our best. That is a fight I will never give up. I will never give up the fight for a future where Americans can pursue their dreams, ambitions, and aspirations, where the women of America have the freedom to make decisions about their own body and not have their government telling them what to do. We will never give up the fight to protect our schools and our streets from gun violence. And America, we will never give up the fight for our democracy, for the rule of law, for equal justice, and for the sacred idea that every one of us, no matter who we are or where we start out, has certain fundamental rights and freedoms that must be respected and upheld. And we will continue to wage this fight in the voting booth, in the courts, and in the public square. And we will also wage it in quieter ways, in how we live our lives, by treating one another with kindness and respect, by looking in the face of a stranger and seeing a neighbor, by always using our strength to lift people up, to fight for the dignity that all people deserve. The fight for our freedom will take hard work, but like I always say, we like hard work. Fit. Hard work is good work. Hard work. To the young people who are watching, it is, I love you. <laughs> to the young people who are watching, it is okay to feel sad and disappointed, but please know it's gonna be okay. On the campaign, I would often say, when we fight, we win. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Sometimes the fight takes a while. That doesn't mean we won't win. That doesn't mean we won't win. The important thing is don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Don't ever stop trying to make the world a better place. You have power. You have power. And don't you ever listen 
When anyone tells you something is impossible because it has never been done before. You have the capacity to do extraordinary good in the world. And so to everyone who is watching, do not despair. This is not a time to throw up our hands. This is a time to roll up our sleeves. This is a time to organize, to mobilize, and to stay engaged for the sake of freedom and justice and the future that we all know we can build together. Look, many of you know I started out as a prosecutor, and throughout my career, I saw people at some of the worst times in their lives, people who had suffered great harm and great pain, and yet found within themselves the strength and the courage and the resolve to take the stand to take a stand to fight for justice, to fight for themselves, to fight for others. So let their courage be our inspiration. Let their determination be our charge. And I'll close with this. There's an adage an historian once called a law of history true of every society across the ages. The adage is, only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. I know many people feel like we are entering a dark time, but for the benefit of us all, I hope that is not the case. But here's the thing, America, if it is, let us fill the sky with the light of a brilliant, brilliant billion of stars. The light, the light of optimism, of faith, of truth, and service. work guide us, even in the face of setbacks, toward the extraordinary promise of the United States of America. I thank you all. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. I thank you all. Now listen, man, I know you guys are a bunch of jaded internet people, probably feeling pretty, uh, pretty cynical, pretty pessimistic today, but I think her, her language resonates with me. It's perfectly understandable for people of our persuasion. I'm just assuming most everybody in the chat are of a left wing persuasion here, uh, or rather an anti MAGA persuasion. That's the coalition, right? It's easy to, to feel uh, disappointed, angry, infuriated. The, the, the whole range of negative emotions can pop up in a, in a moment like this. And I'm, I'm not going to bullshit you guys and try to tell you to stuff that down, you know, or meditate and, you know, you're going to feel these feelings. What I want to caution against is despair. That's, that's what I really don't want to see. I don't want to see people feel um, hopeless about the future. I'm not hopeless about the future. This sucks. This really sucks. And let me count the ways for how much this sucks. But chins up. I'm serious. Chins the f up. If you need a few days to collect yourself, to sort of like process what happened, that's fine. That's fine. That's a, that's a human thing, but keep your chins up for Christ's sakes. Don't let them see you looking at the ground. Don't let them, don't let them see you like that. Okay. Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't let them see you looking at the ground. All right. 
it's on to the next fight you know i i i, I was you know like going through my own emotions last night reacting to this to this uh to this result and i woke up today and what i'm thinking about is like okay what went wrong and how can we correct for that that's all that's all i'm concerned about right now as we sort of like get some distance from the election i think that picture will become more and more clear you're going to hear competing takes for what happened why she lost what she could have could have done differently in order to win and 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 some of these i think will be very data based and and very hard to refute and others will be more focused on intangibles that you can't really prove it's just kind of a gut feeling and so i'm not interested in like watching that conversation play out especially from like certain circles uh i have no desire to hear what they have to say about a post-mortem or anything like that this is what i plan to do this week i plan to, to, to take it easy man that's that's what i plan to do I plan to uh, go to the gym tonight. I plan to play some video games. I plan to put my phone down, leave it downstairs with Esme. Hey, hang on to this for me. And, uh, you know, do, do things that I like, hang out with some friends. That's, that's what I'm going to do this week. And then we can have this conversation. We can, we can have this, this detailed conversation about, like, what could, what, 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 what could have happened. Maybe how could we have pre pre prevented this from happening? But at the end of the day, guys... <clears throat> The American people chose MAGA and they chose his movement and they chose him and they rejected the Democrats. That's what happened. And in their minds, I'm sure they believe that they're being rational in accordance with their experience and their beliefs, you know, in their minds, I'm sure they think that they're being rational. Maybe we think that they're not super rational, but for them they are. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be angry, you know, with your fellow countrymen for making this baffling decision. I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel anger or feel any emotions, but just don't, don't despair. For the love of God, whatever you do, don't despair. Don't, don't get hammered every night. And, 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 uh, like when I, I, I did a little scrolling on Twitter today and there was just a lot of just like anger, you know, like it was mostly anger on my feed, just a ton of anger, a little bit of confusion, some finger pointing. And for me, I just, I just, for me, it's probably not great to like spend a lot of time looking at that. You know what I mean? People are going through their shit and a lot of people process that shit online with like social media posts and stuff like that. Let's storm the Capitol. Chill, 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 chill. I will not be doing that. I'll be staying here. Um, regarding your tweet about Dems changing messaging and alternative media, do you figure left-wing media personalities are going to be able to grow to the right wing sphere when social media sites and YouTube cater to those types. I don't know. Like I, th and that's what I was getting to a moment ago, but like the right wing social media kind of industry is just so massive. Uh, and like, who do we have to compete? We have like destiny, David Pakman. We've got some of these new gen Z people like Luke Beasley, Adam Mas Mockler, couple other guys you know so and, and and they do like really decent numbers right but then you have like folks like Hassan who who I think does way more to depress young voter turnout than you know he, he I, I, I don't know how many people he turned out to vote for Kamala in swing states you know for, for example I really don't know excuse me Hutch, love your content. Hope you continue to succeed. Thanks for ever making those videos on Machinima back in the day. Cheers, buddy. Um, they're, you know, the Hassan, Mike, Wing, their theory is going to be that she should have, uh, I don't know, have they ever articulated what she should have proposed for the border stuff? Have they ever, like, articulated, like, what they would have done rather than say, like, they wouldn't have done the bipartisan bill? I don't know if I've ever heard, um, like, an idea. Do you think the race, do you think race or gender played a part? Reason I ask, Teamsters internal polling where support for Biden versus Harris was flipped, not saying Biden would have won, but like, say, a Josh Shapiro as president. I, I really don't know who could have beat Donald Trump this time around. I really don't know. I have no idea. What, what we saw broadly in the electorate is, you know, a shift rightwards. You know, in, 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 like, there wasn't a single state that shifted to the left by a percentage in terms of Kamala's performance, by uh, anything more than 3%. There was not a single state that shifted more than 3% to the left. And we saw, um, we saw massive shifts to the right, in the, concentrated in the rural areas. 
but why the right word shift? Does it really all come down to the border? I don't think the border is as salient as just uh, the inflation stuff was. And any anytime there's like economic, um, like an economic downturn, demagogues can just thrive in that kind of a spot. Like every dictator throughout history rode into power on a struggling economy. Uh, and even though the economy improved, uh, what we observed was that for a lot of people, they had this expectation that prices would come down. And it was never really clearly articulated to them or explained to them that, 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 that this would be catastrophic. This would be like a deflationary spiral. And so people had these expectations that these inelastic goods would see like the prices would come back down to like 2019, 2020, which we don't want to happen. That shouldn't happen. But, but uh, it didn't matter if they made... Um, so something I, I saw people talking about was, was uh, a lot of voters didn't like Biden trying to take, uh, take credit for, for, for real wage growth. So what they heard was like, voters will give themselves credit for getting a lot of... for, for getting a raise, for example. And then, of course, they blame the government for when like uh, the price of eggs go up. And so even though there were like Biden wins on the economy, even though he presided over a soft landing, like the soft landing is complete. We landed. It's so it was soft. Um, it, it made people pinch pennies for sure. But the incumbent party got blamed for it. I think it's that simple. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's crazy complicated. I think any like literally any Democratic candidate that you possibly could imagine running on any platform that you could possibly imagine was running uphill. It was an uphill fight. And for enough Americans, the argument against Donald Trump's character, his felony convictions, his, uh, his fraud case, his corruption, January 6th, none of that was more important than uh, inflation for a lot of people. I think it's that simple. And I think Trump making inroads with young men and Hispanic men Democrats need to take a long, hard look at that. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the answer to that is. I really don't know. That has me really worried. Not hopeless, but I'm like, this is a problem. This is a problem. Because there's a, there's a lot of young men in this country that are getting their information from unreliable sources. From Tim Pool, from Rogan, from Russell Brand, from Andrew Tate. Dana White. <laughs> so this Gen Z trend is like that's like a that's like a five alarm fire. Like we need to pay attention to that. And I don't know what the answer to that is. But whatever whatever is going on right now is just not working.